Hello and welcome to the Magical Midlife Podcast, where you get a refreshing, uplifting and optimistic perspective on life in your 40s and 50s. I'm your host, Lindsay DeSwart, and I'm delighted that you've joined us here today. So let's jump right in. Today's episode is with Masako Kazawa, who is a podcasting um, friend of mine and a meditation teacher. And I think you're going to really enjoy the episode. She has done some really courageous moves in her life and faced with what we're all facing at the moment, um, tapping into a little bit of another sister's courage, I think is a really worthwhile uh, chat to listen to. So I hope you enjoy the episode. I loved catching up with her and... Have a listen and see what you think. Masako, welcome, welcome. It's so nice to have you on the show. Thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me on, Lindsay. My pleasure. So what I would love to hear about today and to share with everybody listening is We are in this funny theme at the moment, and you are a perfect example of taking the steps that we all need to take right now. And so I would love for you to share your story and Mm -hmm. the theme that we're currently in, which I'm podcasting about and emailing about and social mediaing about, is this whole idea of having no idea what the next step is no path to follow the world ahead of us is looking very unknown and a lot of us who've led quite normal forward kind of driven structured lives do not know what to do with this yeah so for the years i've known you you constantly inspire me because you show so many examples of just making a brave leap and taking the next step so would you be happy to share that with us and about the things that you have to think about and consider and then what happens afterwards because you've completed so many of these steps (laughs) well thank you so much for your kind words um yes it's not like I thought that's what I was doing, taking a leap. (laughs) But it's been part of my life, big, big part of my life, taking a leap into the unknown and doing something I've never done. Um, It started out when I was in my, I guess, teenage years. I wanted to study abroad. I wanted to live elsewhere. And I wanted to learn a new language. I wanted to be fluent in a second language. That was like a strong desire that I had growing up in Japan. Mm -hmm. And as soon as the opportunity came in, I just took it. And at age 21, I found myself leaving my own country where my family lives and landing in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. United States <laughs> oh okay <laughs> what to, why there what was special about there oh there was a reason my hometown and market Michigan are sister cities oh, and really? yes a state of Michigan and my uh, home prefecture Shiga prefecture are sister states so each city had a sister city um, agreement and so happened to be there is a northern Michigan University in market Michigan And that university supplied a scholarship to one student every year from my hometown. So when I was a junior in college in Japan, I thought, okay, I'm just going to apply and I hope I'll get it and I can study abroad for free for a year. Cool. So that's how I got to um, the United States and... I was supposed to leave after one year and go back to the school that I was attending in Japan. But six months into that journey of just living in a foreign country, 
I barely spoke English at that time. It was like a <laughs> challenging thing to jump into a college class when you barely understand the language. But、yeah. I did that and it was very difficult. And at the same time, it was exhilarating. I was、oh, I... seeing my upper limit every single day. Like, this is my limit. This is the as much as I can understand or do. And then stretching that upper limit, like every single day, like, oh, I can do this now. I can understand this now. And that was so exciting to me. Yeah. So, yes, it took a lot of hard work. But at the same time, it was so rewarding that I could not think of going back to what I used to, what I used to know. What I, how I used to live back in Japan. Right. Because I've already experienced it. Yeah. Why do I repeat the same experience over and over? There's no like juice left in that gum. I chewed it for like years. <laughs> <laughs> for a lovely American analogy. There you go. <laughs> When you can chew the new, you know, pack of gum with different flavors, I mean, that's more delicious than. Chewing the same gum for like two years. Or... Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> you know? So, did you manage to finish your university years in the States? I did. Yes,、right. I did. I declared my major in speech communication. And I was originally wanting to become a flight attendant at that time. Right. So that I can travel around. And I thought, well, in Asian culture, that is a very、um, respected. Occupation for especially for women. Okay. And that was one of my dreams. And one day I was talking to my advisor, and he was so puzzled because in the United States, flight attendant is not exactly、um, like a privileged occupation right, that、yeah. like most ladies like would dream about. Yeah. So he was like, You have a great GPA. You have you. You've got great grades. Like, why、yeah. don't you go to graduate school instead? And so I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> right. And what did you take? What did you do? I got a master's degree in psychology. Wow. Okay. And between undergraduate and graduate school, I actually got married. Holy cow. Speaking of launching yourself into the unknown. <laughs> no, looking back, that was I just got to you know, northern Michigan at age 21, and I met、um, somebody. And yeah, after two, three years, we were married. And that was something I never thought that I would do.、Right. But at the, same, I, at the same time, I was inspired to take that the path into、yeah. the unknown. And that's what I did. And we moved around because of his job. And yeah, I was 23 when I first got married. Wow. Okay. And then once you'd finished your master's,、um, and then what was the next step for you? The next step was I tried to look for a job、um, in that field, but we were living in a,、um, certain areas because of my ex husband's job.、Um, that was not really ideal for my career field. Okay. And so I looked around and I just had odd like office jobs for a few years. And then finally, he got out of the military. And we were、right. able to move to wherever we wanted to live. And I always wanted to live in a big city. So we moved to Chicago, Illinois. And that's where we lived for many years, like 16, 17 years until like two years ago. And I got into、um, legal industry. Right. Only because they were looking for somebody who can speak and write Japanese. Okay. I never had an interest in laws or getting into legal industry, but、uh, that was just 
what was available. And I thought, well, I can work in a nice office in downtown. That was also like one of the things I wanted to do. I wanted to live in downtown、mm-hmm. in a high rise. I also wanted、right. to work in a fancy office in downtown.、Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> I didn't specify what exactly I would be doing,、yeah. but I just had that image of me working in a nice office in downtown. So that came true. And fantastic. <laughs> I stayed in the legal industry for 16, 15, about 15 years. Started out within,、uh, with the immigration law. I only did that for a year and then somehow got into patent law, intellectual property law. Yeah. And I spent like about 14 years in that industry. Oh, my goodness. And so within that time, Did you have like a career path planned out? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, it was just like working in the legal industry was good in many ways. I liked it. But at the same time, I wanted to do something a little more creative. Yeah. So before I wanted to become a flight attendant, I wanted to become an artist. Like, At、age five, six, seven years old, like、yeah. I was into drawing. I knew that's what I wanted to do with my life. Right. But my parents, being、uh, good Asian parents, so to speak,、yeah. they're like, What are you talking about? Like, get good grades, get into good schools, and get a、um, stable job, like working、yeah. for government or something. <laughs> Even though I didn't have any interest in. The stable jobs.、Um, I wanted to please my parents. Right. I wanted them、yeah. to be proud of myself. And so I listened to them. I was very obedient. Yeah. So, so what age、um, or when within your journey did you find meditation? Because meditation、oh, has been、recent. life changing, hasn't it, for you? Yes. Oh my gosh. It's been the biggest game changer in my life. I found it、uh, like se- seven, eight years ago. Right. So I'm 47 now. So about age 40. And I went through a divorce. Right. We were married for 12 years and we had a child, one child from that marriage. And The marriage was very challenging. That was one of my soul contracts. Looking back, I can、oh, really? see it now. But what did I know back then? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And、right? so, what, what part did meditation play for you? About, it was about like two years after I, I got divorced.、Um, our daughter was still young. She was like, Two, three, four years old. I was working full time in legal industry. I was exhausted physically,、yeah. mentally, emotionally.、Um, my physical health went down. In what way? I, my period stopped. My cycle stopped. Oh, wow.、Okay. That was very concerning because it was always regular. Yeah. And then I had like digestive problems and I just did not have enough energy to go through a day. I、right. still had to, you know, get my daughter ready and then get, get to work and then do the work and then come home and then take care of everything. And、yeah. I could not focus at work either. So I tried a bunch of different things to improve my physical health. So I looked into the biohacking things. Oh, yeah. And I started, you know, Implementing those changes. And a lot of people that I listen to in the biohacking field、yeah. were speaking highly of meditation and mindfulness、uh-huh. practice. Okay. And just, I, just in case anybody doesn't know about biohacking, can you just explain a little bit about what that is? Biohacking is like understanding how your body works, brain works,、okay. and taking advantage of your, your brain or I'm not sure if I'm explaining it this well. There are certain things that you can do to manipulate your brain, or right, yeah. you can use certain t y p e of food or herbs or supplements to enhance your performance. Okay. 
Oh, wow. Whoever yeah. came up with the word biohacking was a marketing genius, weren't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's basically like combining so many different techniques and yeah. diet and supplements and practices and daily mantras and rituals and give it a name of biohacking and we're all good. We've got a whole new industry. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, so that's biohacking. So you started doing that and that's how you found out about meditation. Yes. Okay. I never was into spirituality. I was working in downtown, you know, Chicago, working in a legal Eagle. office. So yeah. I was like so far away from the spiritual community, so to yeah. speak. And I just wanted to see if it would work. Right. And I didn't know how to meditate. Yeah. I just tried to um, do it on my own at first. And I looked for guided meditations on YouTube. And I found some that I liked. I, I listened to it. And it was not like an overnight change or process. Right. It was like maybe like a few months later after doing it every day, I would like notice like, wait, is this one of the benefits of doing meditation? Oh, really? What sort of benefits? What did you notice? Like, for example... Maybe in the situations that I would have reacted in certain ways before, prior to meditation, now I had this mental space where I could think, like stop and then think and examine what I was feeling and how I am going to respond from there. Oh, wow. It was like a mental bandwidth I never had was there. And... When I noticed that, I was like, oh my gosh, this is fascinating. Yeah. It's invisible, but it's definitely there. I feel the difference. So that's when I got further into meditation. I wanted to learn more about what's going on with myself. So I read books about meditation. Um, I started taking meditation classes in a local studio and I met some teachers and I asked them questions like, what am I doing? Like, how how do I, you know, become more whatever? Yeah. And one day at the studio, I saw the notice on that bulletin board saying, we offer meditation teacher certification. Uh-huh. It's starting like next month. So I'm like, wow, I don't think I want to teach meditation, but I would love to deepen my own practice because this has been fascinating. And I'm so curious where this will take me if I further go down and deepen my practice. How has it changed you? (laughs) (laughs) Because your story, the the few years I've known you, your story is just just grows and grows in adventure and Awake it keeps really. going. It just it keeps, keeps going. going. It's fantastic, yeah. So that was about four years ago. That was before the pandemic, right before the right. pandemic. That's yeah. when I was taking the um, teacher training course. And then everything went uh, locked down, right? Yeah. And we started working from home. I started working from home. And without meditation I don't think I was able to really handle that period of time as well as I did really yeah wow okay so in what way I mean just yeah because break that when, down the, a bit? when the world is in chaos if you are paying attention to what's going on outside of you yeah. then you will go crazy you become yeah. chaotic but by that time, I learned a way to center myself, come right. back to myself, yeah. and being aware of what I was thinking, yeah, and how my thinking was affecting my emotions and actions. So that was a life changing. That was the game changer. Yeah, and from there, not only just to examine what I was thinking. I learned that you can pick and choose what you think. Yeah. <laughs> it's within our control. We don't yeah. have to be always like manipulated by somebody else or something else. Yeah. 
we can choose the fast that would serve us. I mean, that was game changer. That was an <laughs> eye-opening concept yeah. to me. Yeah. So you can like choose the, the fast that would empower you rather than, you know, not serve you. Yeah. And that's just empowering. I think it's really empowering, but I also think it's an absolute game changer when you step into the midlife window. Yes. Yeah, I don't know where to start. <clears throat> but <laughs> so from, yeah, from the lockdown to um, where I am today, about two years ago, I got laid off from work, the legal industry job that I had. Right. And by that time, though, I already knew that industry was not for me anymore. Right. It served its purpose. And I was wanting to some do something else. Yeah. And but I didn't I didn't know what. And I was looking for it, but it was taking me a long time to like find, you know, this is it. This is what I want to do. Yeah. But one of the things I've done is to always like educate myself with the topics that I am interested in and like read by reading books or by taking classes. And I was listening to Mark Grove's podcast. He is my mid, um, relationship coach. I've taken his relationship courses. Right. And he had Kathy Heller as a guest on his okay. podcast. And yeah. that's how I found Kathy. And she was offering a podcasting class. And I had no intention or desire to start a podcast. Right. But I <laughs> um, wanted to take her class. Yeah. And that was the only class that she was offering at that time, two yeah. years ago. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to sign up. Yeah. And even during the class, I'm like, I don't think I'm going to do this, but I am like doing homework weekly. And <laughs> um, you remember this, you were in that class. I remember it well, yes. <laughs> in one one week, um, in one of the classes, the homework was to decide a title of your podcast and record a trailer. Yeah. And I'm like, am I going to do this just for the sake of doing the homework? Or am I actually going to start a podcast? Yeah. That was like the defining moment. And I'm like, <laughs> if I'm going to do a podcast, what am I going to talk about? And first of all, I had so much resistance toward doing a podcast in my second language. Yeah. Like I felt like, no, I, I'm not qualified to do that. Like, who am I to do a podcast in my second language and then talk about what? But from there, when I sat down and meditated for a little while, it just was clear, like, I'm going to talk about meditation, of course. What <laughs> else am I going to talk about? It's been the biggest game changer in my life. And I want to share this with as many people as possible because it's going to benefit every single person. Yeah. So from there, it's like, okay, let's do the title. Why not meditate? Because that's just a straightforward. Yeah. And a great <laughs> title. It's very easy, isn't it? <laughs> right. Yeah. And yeah, I recorded a trailer and the, for the whole time, I'm like, am I really going to do this? Am I really <laughs> doing this? Yeah. And I created the uh, the cover art, you know, and then decided the title, put the title into that art and put it on Apple podcast. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is now a thing. <laughs> I birthed, birthed this into an existence. I did not know if I could do it, but I thought, oh, why not? Yeah. So whenever I find myself in the, like fork on the fork on the road, so to speak yeah. moment, like, do I do this or do I not do this? Right. You know, there are two ways to take. Yeah, there's pathways. a choice point is what my coach calls it. Yeah. Whenever I am at that point, I kind of detach myself and then see it from the uh, drone view. Like I see myself standing on the fork on the road and I kind of like foresee what is going to happen if I took the route A or B. Okay. So me doing a podcast Okay, that could be fun. So right. that's one path, right? Yeah. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but as something unknown, that could be like good. 
Yeah. The other path was not doing a podcast. And I'm, I'm like, I've been on that path. I've already experienced it. I know what that's like. And I don't think I need to re-experience that. That's a great way of looking at it. Yeah, it's like, I've been there and I've done that. So why would I do that again? Yeah. Cool. Um, I would say curiosity has been the thing that's making me, like inspiring me to go into the unknown and then do the things I never thought I would do. That's such a growth mindset. Because don't you want to see? I mean, yeah. if there's a book, like a thick book, and then you are on the chapter 10 and there are like 20 more chapters to go, to, <laughs> go through. Like, would you end at chapter 10? <laughs> Don't you want to turn the page on to chapter 11 and see what happens? Yeah, seriously. That's such a great way because how else can you move forward? Because we don't know what lies ahead. You don't know what lies ahead either way the path goes. No. Other than there's more chance of getting more of the same. Yes. If you choose to choose getting more of the same yeah but if you're even curious because you don't want more of the same as you say why would you even choose that path yes and even more exciting thing is the next 20 chapters are not written yet cool (laughs) i love that yeah the past 10 chapters yes they have been written you've read that but the next 20 chapters chapter 11 has not been written yet you're just turning the page. Yeah. You're writing it as you go. And that's like living on the edge of your consciousness. And that excites me. That frightens me too. Yeah. But I get it. I totally get it. I just cannot go back to chapter 10 and relive the same chapter over and over again for the next however many years of my life. So with that mindset, because you've obviously you've you've practiced that curiosity muscle, what else have you learned about yourself? Because you just you keep taking courageous step after courageous step. You're not still in Michigan now, are you? Where have you moved to now? Oh, so from Michigan, um, that's when I started my journey in the States, Um, then lived in Virginia Beach area on the East Coast and then Madison, Wisconsin, then Chicago lived in Chicago for many years. And then two years, about two years ago, not even, um, we moved down to Florida. That's where I am now. I never wow. thought of living in Florida. <laughs> and how'd you find it? <laughs> the, the, I will phrase it this way. The cycle of appreciation of living in Chicago came to an end. Okay. A lot of things. Fair enough that I was attached to that was attaching me to Chicago have ended and it was time to make a change and I always like I guess had a desire to live close to the water yeah and close to the beach and my daughter loved it when she visited here first so yeah I moved here without coming here, with, without visiting here first. <laughs> I remember crazy. it. I remember it because we were having conversations <laughs> within our podcasting group. Yeah. And one week you were there. And then you were like, oh, well, I've just got to pack up because I'm moving to Florida. We're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then the next time we spoke to you, which was maybe the next week or maybe two weeks, you were like, oh, yeah, you know, I found a flat and I've done this and I'm there and there and there and we found a school. And like, we're like, Oh my goodness, yeah. like, how do you do that? Uh, it's It was so scary. Every time. <laughs> Every time it's scary, isn't it's it? It's scary. But the good thing is, once you go through that change and jumping into the unknown yeah. a few times, you kind of know the drill. Yeah, right? fair enough. It's yeah. scary, but, and it's uncomfortable. It's a lot of work, but it works out at the end or like somehow it works out yeah and once you go through the cycle a few times in your life you know that it's gonna be okay this time too you gain self-confidence you have like evidence that you have collected so far that you can refer to 
So yeah, it was uncomfortable. It's still a little bit uncomfortable, but I mean, life is too long to live in one place. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I know some people do that. Many people probably do that, but I just cannot picture myself living in the same city or same place for, I don't know, 80 years of my life. Yeah. No, <laughs> we, were saying that before, we were saying that before we started recording. Didn't yeah. We? Yeah. Yes, apparently there is some nomadic tendencies to us. <laughs> it's like, okay, what's the next journey? Let's go. Every time when I travel like abroad or like even areas that I've never been to and I like, I picture myself like living there. Yeah. That's one of the things I do whenever I travel. Like I picture myself like living in this type of building, doing what and and I kind of like foreshadow what might come. Right. And I don't really think about like making plans at that time but it's kind of imprinted in my subconscious mind yeah fair enough it's almost like you're just trying it on yes yeah and living in florida is one of the um examples of that um i was talking to somebody like four years ago like possibly like living in a small beach town and that'd be great blah 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 it was very a uh, hypothetical situation yeah and i never thought that would be you know become um a case but looking back it did i mean <laughs> i'm like Amazing. oh i thought about this we talked about this yeah it's a different situation but yeah like it's been in my subconscious mind. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, one of the other things I want to ask you about, um, and we talked about this before as well, is stepping into midlife, because you're a little yes. younger than I am, but s- still in midlife. Um, what are the things that you've found out about yourself that have also changed how curious you are about what's next? Mm. Um, see, I never saw myself in midlife, but since I have met so many amazing women who are embracing the midlife, that really shifted my perspective. Right. It was a paradigm shift. I thought midlife was something that you have to endure and survive (laughs) and come out somehow. (laughs) Yeah. Lucky if you get through the other side. Right? Like, I only heard the doom and gloom stories. Yeah, but, they shared too often. Right? Like a victimhood, almost. Yeah. But seeing somebody like you embracing the journey and empowering, it really empowered me. And I see it as, like, one of the amazing phases of lifetime. Yeah. That completely shifted my perspective. Um. I mean, our body is still really young and capable in mid-age. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're taking good care of your body, then you might be in a better shape now than you were before. Yeah. I mean, um, we, we talked about this before, didn't we? And you said you're in better shape now. And also some areas that we were talking about, you've learned so much more about now because before you were just kind of following the path. I mean, we talked about health, yeah. we talked about sexuality, we talked about money, all of these things. You just kind of followed what you were meant to do. But you've taken real action now to to find out more about what it actually means to you. Yes. So around age 40, I came to a point in life where I felt like I have been living my life haphazardly in like important areas of my life. One was in spirituality. Yeah. The other one was sexuality. Yeah. And the other one was money. Yeah. Like I've kind of like 
glazed over or lived haphazardly not really knowing what I was doing but yeah. you know somehow managed yeah and I felt an urge to really like know like more of the, the truth of all those three areas yeah so I searched for the information that's the amazing thing about technology these days yeah. information is available on if everything. you want to look for it yeah. and um i know um, dr joe dispenza says the ignorance is a choice now <laughs> yeah there's no getting away from that is there <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so i searched and uh, read books and then i and whenever you're ready to learn your teacher appears from nowhere seems like yeah. So I found some coach, um, I found sex coach, sex and relationship coach. I also found relationship coach, Mark Groves, I talked about. And then um, the, especially the recent few years, I've been learning about the truth of what's actually happening, what's actually have been happening without me knowing the, the truth of (laughs) Um, like, uh, for example, like military industrial complex. I never knew that. Like What's everything that? is, um, so the, let's say like wars in general. Yeah. yeah. Are like manufactured for certain groups of people to make money. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. I never really like knew that. And I think meditation definitely um played a part of me becoming more aware of things in general. Right. More like dis more discernment. Yeah. Came to me. Like looking at things and Asking myself, like, is that really true? Even though I I believed this was the truth for like most of my life, but what if it's not? <laughs> yes. To start to question things. Yeah. As you say, if you question spirituality, you question all the things about finance, because finance is really um all money and finance is kind of locked away with a huge intimidation factor of well, yeah. you couldn't be clever enough, smart enough, or whatever to to really know this so you kind of get what you're left with you get the remnants of what the high street banks may be telling us and obviously you know that's changing if if you choose for it to change then same thing with sexuality so much shame and guilt around talking about it religions hidden it so how much do you want to know about that and you know you've got to explore it same thing about spirituality when you really find yourself digging deep into actually who am I what do I believe what's important to me who do I want to learn from yeah again it's it's another thing that you you can't just believe what you're being told no you have to question you have to be discerning because otherwise you can't take control of any of it within your life you cannot take responsibility of your life yeah. If you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. And I've lived that way for many years of my life. Mm. Especially when I lived in Japan. Whatever my dad said, that was the the thing. That was that was the law. The law. Yeah. <laughs> that was like both law and religion. Yeah. Almost. And yeah. after I left home. I really struggled because I lost that, the law and religion at the same time. I felt like I needed something. I needed the big daddy to like, you know, take care of me. Yeah. Like emotionally. Yeah. Because I didn't know how to believe or what to believe. Yeah. So I went through the phases of um, like becoming Christian Oh, I grew up as an atheist, so that was a huge jump. Right. And like finding something, maybe there's bigger than what is here and now. 
yeah the higher power god whatever people call it that was like the biggest jump that i took in spirituality and from there um since i had so many christian friends i became christian but then the organized religion became a little um too manipulative right okay to me yeah and i was like wait you you said that god is unconditional love but at the same time you're saying um like i'm disappointing god if i did not stay in this marriage i mean that caused more how does that work (laughs) yeah that's contradiction in itself (laughs) i could not just follow like blindly you know yeah uh, what they're saying so from there um like what is spirituality what is what is the higher power all of those things i searched and seeked for and i, I reached a certain level of understanding yeah and then from there there's always being another layer of understanding or maybe un- unlearning yeah i'm learning what i yeah. thought that was yeah and with the real life experience and um emotional maturity and the wisdom that that i've gained throughout the the experience um things are becoming more and more clear and a little easier in a way for me to discern Cool. What's actually like what sounds true and what doesn't sound true. Right. Or what is in alignment, what fits, you know, what feels good. Yeah. Um in every area of life. So like financially, sexually, spiritually, like yeah. every area. And I feel that midlife is awesome because you actually have the enough like level of maturity and yeah. discernment to be able to know what is actually in alignment with you or not. And you don't always have to go to somebody to find out. You can you now have the tools within you or outside of you maybe that you can use. Yeah. You can rely on yourself. You know enough about yourself. So I am very excited about entering into a midlife. I don't know what actual like cut cut off age is the midlife cut off age, like from age, you know. You know what? To... Just like you said, I think we've now we're empowered enough to make it up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like you're in midlife, or don't you? Up to you. <laughs> right. is yours, you know. Menopause kicks in at different ages. Maybe that. Oh, that's life. yeah. So, that's who knows? true. I'd yeah. say, yeah, you can decide whether you're in the midlife or you're not, is what I'd say. Yeah. Which, again, it just speaks to the whole empowerment of it all, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you think you're going to be miserable in your mid-age just because that's what you heard on the yeah. news or TV or magazines, then that's what you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But don't forget there are other possibilities you yeah, can you be can... more fit. You can be more, um, like not physically younger, maybe, but maybe physically younger or in a better shape. And um, you could be more empowered. You could be yeah. stronger. You could be wiser, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Now, look, I'm conscious of time, always conscious of time with these. So I lo- I'm so grateful that you've shared your story with us because every time I speak to you and I listen to your podcast, which is called Why Not Meditate, which I will put in the links below, of course, um, I always learn something new and there's always a new inspiration. And yeah, it's just an absolute gift. So is there what's the best way for people to find you so they can tune in to you and also to see some of your beautiful photography work as well because that's another thing that you do thank you Lindsay. 
Um, I'm on Instagram. That's where you can see my pictures and some of the, I guess, musings that you can call it um, at masakozawa underscore coaching. Okay. And I, yeah, uh, my podcast, like you said, is why not meditate? And it's available everywhere people listen to your podcasts. Fantastic. And do you have a specific release day or? I usually release every Friday. Okay, cool. Yes. Fantastic. That's awesome. Okay. So huge big thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for sharing your story. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And I hope that people are going to come and tune in and listen and learn why they should meditate. (laughs) Oh, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. That's why. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Thank you, Lindsay. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you've enjoyed the conversation, please come and leave a review. If you go to the Apple Podcasts app and scroll down to the bottom of the podcast page, and then you'll find the ratings and review section. Please invite your friends to come and listen by sharing the link. And you can join the conversation and let me know who you'd like to hear interviewed and what topics you'd like discussed over at Facebook on the Magical Midlife group. You can also find me on Instagram at Lindsay DeSwart, where the conversation will also continue. I can't wait to see you on the next episode. And once again, keep living your magical midlife.